Hello everybody, Ranger John Heron here at Huntsville State Park. And when I was trying to figure out what I was going to do my next virtual program on, I went for a walk over here at the Loblolly Trail, and what do you know, it hit me right across the face. Smack dab in the middle of the trail that I needed to do a video recognizing one of our most talented, most hardworking artists that we have residing right here in the park. Let's go meet her. And here she is. Now she's a petite little thing, very small. I don't know how well she's gonna come through on the video, but she is what's called a spiny back orb weaver. It's a spider that lives here in the park and as I said is one of the most hardworking, amazing artists that you will find in these woods. Now how do I know this is a female? Well, like other insects, they have what's called sexual dimorphism in which there is a big difference between the appearance of a male and the female. So the classic spiny back orb weaver with its larger uh, body in the back there with the spines and coloration is a classic female. The males are much smaller, don't have the coloration or the spines. The females are known for building these elaborate webs where the males tend to just kind of hang around by a thread. Now she is an orb weaver, and which means she is known for her web design, which <laughs> given the fact that she has uh, eight legs, if she had access to computers, this is definitely who you'd want to call for your IT support. But her webs are incredible. I'm 6'3", she's about head level for me. She's got three points coming off this web, one of which is going down to about knee level to a branch. I've got another one up here, but I'm on a trail right now, and her third point is on the other side of the trail. So it's already stretching farther than I can reach. So it's an incredible design how they're able to pull these webs so far apart. Normally inside the web, there's a small little section where she will uh, reside, normally facing down, so keep an eye out for prey. There'll be a little space before she continues to build out of a more tackier web to catch food. Now, I called her an extremely hard worker because every night she will rebuild this web to make sure it stays structurally sound and is ready to catch food. Now, as far as its food, generally tends to go for smaller insects, flying insects in particular, certain flies, moths, and we can all think, be thankful that they love to eat mosquitoes. Now, these are no, some insects that cause damage to crops, so this is an extremely beneficial creature to us, and this is one we definitely don't want to see lost. Now, for their lifespan, uh, right now it is August and they are starting to come out. Uh, generally, she will have this web built up. There will be one to three males hanging around. Uh, once they've mated, she will have the egg sac with her for a little bit and then she will deposit it somewhere on the underside of a leaf near her web. Once she's done that, Unfortunately, she won't ever be able to be a grandmother because the adult orb weaver will then normally pass away shortly after. Now, the young spiders will be in that egg sac through the winter time, normally after January. That's when they'll start to hatch. They will normally hatch inside. They'll stay in there till they mature a little bit and then come out of the egg sac, at which point they may hang by a thread or build a small inconspicuous web near where the egg sac was. It won't be until again August as it is when they start to mature and come out and build these much more elaborate webs to begin the life cycle over again. Now of course it's easy to identify the spiny back orb weaver uh, by its bright colors, uh, by the spines on its body, uh, which by the way the coloration on them can be a little different and it can be different by region as well. Most commonly I see them with a white like this one here. Again I don't know how well that's going to come through in video but they are they can have a white, yellow, or orange. Their spines majority of them I see are black but on occasions they'll have the red spines as well. Now that's an easy way to identify the orb weaver, the spiny back orb weaver, but you can also identify it by its web. Now there are three common orb weavers that I'll see in this part of Texas. First off, you got the golden silk orb weaver. Some people call it the banana spider. Now that one by the name hints that if you do catch it where the sun hits the web, you'll see a goldish tint to it. 
Uh, the other one is the garden spider. Now, the garden spider and the golden silk orb weaver kind of have a brown, green, and black coloration to them. They run about the same size, which is much larger than the spiny back. But the garden silk orb or the garden orb weaver has that big zigzag that goes down the center. The spiny back orb weaver, their web has these little tufts along the outer edge of their web and this one even has it a little bit in the center. Now some people are still speculating what that is but one of the general consensus is it's there so that birds or other large flying uh, wildlife can see it and try to avoid hitting their web. But one thing with the orb weavers is as I said she's a hard worker. Every night she's going to rebuild this web to make sure it's structurally sound. If the web breaks it's going to rebuild it again. So here's one of the orange marking ones, of course with her orange color and her black markings on there. Around October these make awesome profile pictures as it looks like a little jack-o'-lantern. So amazing little lady right there too. Ready for Halloween. Maybe a little early in August. Now some people do wonder, are these spiders dangerous to humans? They are considered harmless. Now any creature, if mistreated or anything like that, has the potential to bite, but these are considered harmless. In fact, because of the insects they eat, they are considered extremely beneficial to humankind. If anything, they can be a slight inconvenience as they have a tendency to build their webs across trails or porches or areas in which we may travel. Now, if we break their web, again, they will have a tendency to rebuild it in the exact same spot. I know my mom had a tendency to grab a corner of the web, simply pull it off and try and relocate it to train them not to build across the porch and eventually they did learn then. But these are incredibly beneficial creatures and we want to treat them with respect. So as you come out here to Huntsville State Park from August to October, hopefully you get a chance to see one of these hardworking young ladies right here. And remember, this park is home. We are visitors, so we always want to be respectful of the wildlife in our park. And like all our young female artists out there, let's enjoy the design, respect the hard work, and appreciate their contributions to society. Y'all take care.